All right, here's another video in our review of Algebra and Algebra 2 skills. And uh, we're going to talk real quick about polynomials. This should not be too long of a lesson. Um, remember, the polynomials come in several different forms. And polynomials really are the most common type of algebraic expressions that we have. Um, here's some common examples of um, polynomials, like, for example, 2x plus 5. Uh, we also have another example here. We could do something like 3x to the fourth minus 7x squared and plus 2x plus 4. Now, um, let's just talk about these two polynomials real quick. We can classify polynomials in two ways. The first way is by how many terms they have. So the first way to classify polynomials is by how many terms they have. And you've got to remember, you only classify by how many terms after you combine like terms. So if we look at this first example right here, obviously 2x and 5 are not like terms. So we uh, can go ahead and officially count them. There are 1, 2. Again, terms are anything separated by a plus sign or a minus sign. So we um, definitely have two terms there. So that's called a binomial. Binomial is what we call something that has two terms. This next example right here, number 2, again, there's no like terms. So we have 1, 2, 3, four terms, and with four terms, we just call it, we don't have really a special name for it, we just call it a four-termed polynomial. A single-term polynomial, like an example like just 3x to the seventh, that is a single-term polynomial, it's called a monomial. Anything with two terms, we call binomial, and if there's three terms, like x squared minus 9x, uh, plus 20, that would be called a trinomial. After three terms, we just call it a four-term, five-term, six-term, whatever. The next way we classify polynomials is by their degree as well. The degree, again, you look at after you combine all the like terms, it is the largest exponent that you have. That is the degree. So, for example, example number one right here, the largest exponent is right here. That's a one, so we call it a first-degree polynomial. Those are also known as linear polynomials. First degree is linear, so we'll write that down here. So first degree is linear. Uh, a second degree polynomial, like this fourth example right here, we'll label these examples. This fourth example right here, the largest exponent is a two, so that's called a second degree. Uh, I forgot the R in linear there. A second degree polynomial is better known as a quadratic term you guys have all seen before. Uh, a third degree, we don't have an example up here, so I'll just go ahead and throw one up. Uh, 5x to the third minus 7x. That is a third degree. Third degrees we call cubics. And then we also have after cubic, we don't really give them, I mean, there might be some special names you can find out there, but we just call them fourth degree, fifth degree, sixth degree, seventh degree, so forth. So example number two right here would be a fourth degree polynomial. Example number three right here would be a seventh degree polynomial. But our main terms we want to pay attention to are linear, quadratic, and cubic. And another example that a lot of kids sometimes mess up is number eight. No exponents. Remember, you could write that as x to the 0 because anything raised to the 0 is simply a 1. So that would really just be 8. That is a monomial, single term. And we say that that is of the 0th degree. There is no degree there, 0 degree, because there is no exponent on the variable. There, it, there really is no variable, but if there was, it would have a 0 degree there. All right, so that's quick uh, classifying of polynomials. Um, we're going to talk about the operations with polynomials. The first one is addition, um, adding them. Not going to review that at all. It's as simple as combining like terms. The second one is subtraction. Not going to re, uh, review that as well. Um, it just combined like terms. Be careful because any time you have a minus sign before a set of parentheses like this, for example, that minus sign outside the parentheses does need to get distributed. So this would be a negative 3x minus 5. So be careful with parentheses before, I'm sorry, parentheses after a subtraction sign. Third operation we have is multiplication. A um, couple things with multiplication. Once we have uh, distribution, it's the first one. So 3 times x plus 2, that's easy. Distribute the 3, 3x plus 6. That is a monomial 3 times a uh, binomial x plus 2. Uh, we could also do a binomial x plus 2 times another binomial 3x squared minus 4. 
So this is what we call the FOIL method. I'm sure everyone's heard of FOIL method. is for a binomial times a binomial. And that's when you kind of basically just distribute, or you could use the FOIL method. So we got 3x cubed. On the outside, we got a minus 4x. On the inside, we got a 6x squared. And on the last, we have a minus 8. And you can combine like terms, but I don't see any combining like terms that need to be done there. You could also do a binomial, x plus 2, times a trinomial, 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. And you just have to do repeated distribution here. Distribute the x to those three terms. Distribute the 2 to those three terms. You could do that as well. One thing I definitely want to take a look at is squaring um, polynomials. For example, x plus 2 squared. I can't tell how many kids just want to say, oh, that's just x squared plus 4. They distribute the exponent. That is completely wrong. We have something called the uh, binomial square theorem. The binomial square theorem says if you have a binomial, a plus b, for example, squared, there is a formula. What you do is you take a squared, puts in the front, b squared goes in the back. In the middle, you need twice a times b. So a times b is ab, obviously, but you need twice that, so 2ab would go in the middle. If this was a minus sign right here, you would still have a squared in the front b would still be a positive b squared in the back because a negative squared is still positive but the middle would be a times negative b which would be negative a b times two so this would be a minus sign right here so it'd be minus two a b in the middle so watch out for that if you don't like having to memorize the binomial square theorem with the a squared plus two a b plus b squared you can simply remember anytime you see an exponent like that x minus five squared just write it out as x minus five times x minus 5, and then go ahead and FOIL, and you will get the x squared, 25 in the back. In the middle, x times 5 is 5x, but it needs to be doubled, so that's going to should be a minus 10x in the middle, and you would get that same result by FOILing as well. So don't forget that. Uh, we also want to show you how to cube a uh, binomial as well. So if we have a plus b cubed, there is a formula for this as well. And the formula here would be a cubed goes in the front plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b squared. So it's a little bit of a different formula, and you would have if you wanted to do it by hand, you'd have to write out a plus b times a plus b times a plus b, FOIL, and then distribute. It kind of takes a while, or you can use this formula. And uh, there is a slightly different formula for a minus b cubed. And again, it's uh, a cubed goes in the front. In the middle, we have minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed in the back. And oh, I made a mistake up here, or at least it looks like a square. That should be a cube in the back there. So you got to be careful because when you're working with cubes, because when you cube a negative, it, it does end up still being negative. Um, so you got to be careful with that formula as well. So make sure you know how to do the special products with that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you could also divide with polynomials. I don't want to spend um, too much time talking about division because we will spend quite a bit of time about it later. But you can only cancel out factors that are common. And, and what I mean by that is if I have an x plus 2 on top and an x plus 2 on the bottom, those do cancel and you get 1. That's because the entire quantity on top is the same as the entire quantity on the bottom. If you have an x on top and an x plus 2 on the bottom, you cannot cancel out these x's and say, oh, that's going to be 1 half. That's absolutely not true. X is a value. On the bottom, think about it. If X is the same value for 9, for example, you're going to have a 9 on top and 11 on the bottom. Two completely different numbers. Whereas up here, if you have a 9 for X, you'd have 11 on top, 11 on the bottom, makes 1. 11 divided by 11. So please be very, very careful with that. Uh, we don't want um, kids canceling out X's where they cannot be canceled out. Um, hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Same thing here if we have an x minus 2 times an x, or sorry, divided by an x plus 2. I know they look really, really similar, but you can't cancel them out. Again, this is going to be, if x is 9, this is going to be a 7 on top and 11 on the bottom. Completely different enough, uh, values. You know, that doesn't make 1 or it doesn't make anything like that, so just leave it as is. Um, one thing we can watch out for is this sometimes can be a little bit tricky. If we have x plus 2 on the bottom, 
and on top you have 2 minus x. Now, this is a useful strategy. These two things look very, very similar. They both got 2s, they both got x's, but at the same time, they obviously look different. On top, um, you know, sometimes you can factor out a negative sign. So just think if I factor out a negative sign on top. That positive 2 needs to turn into a negative 2. That negative x will turn into a positive x. And you can always double check by putting that back through positive 2 minus x. And on the bottom, you have, again, x plus 2. But once again, can I cancel these out? Absolutely not. These are very different. Negative 2 plus 9 would be 7. On the bottom, 9 plus 2 would be 11. Completely different values. Um, now, that is to say, if let's say this right here was a minus sign, and this was a minus sign, then all of a sudden, negative 2 plus x and x minus 2 would be the same thing. You can cancel out and get a negative 1. So oftentimes when we see things like 2 minus x on top and then an x minus 2 on the bottom, they look very, very similar. What's going to happen is it's going to end up canceling to be negative 1 because when you factor the negative out, it switches around and there's that negative left over there. So watch out for values like that. So that's a quick little lesson on polynomials, adding, subtracting, multiplying, a little bit on dividing. And also remember, um, we talked about naming polynomials as well by terms and by degrees. Sounds good. Thanks a lot.